morning. Good morning. And we're talking talking with uh, Doctor. Do you, do you like to use your first name or not? Um, Doctor Carl Crump is fine. Okay. That's great. So we'll we'll talk to Doctor Carl Crump. <laughs> okay. You're a DVM, mm -hmm. which is which stands for Doctor of Veterinary Medicine. Okay. I don't know all that stuff. You know, technical <laughs> <Okay>. stuff. <laughs> I only went to third grade, so I don't know all that stuff. <laughs> uh, now I called you because you know my son um, has a uh, a ribbon snake. Uh huh. And uh, this ribbon steak was attacked by uh, a very vicious, our very vicious cat that we have, Lucy, <laughs> and uh, scarred quite, quite badly. And you guys took care of it, and it's eating again. It's, it's, it's healthy. You know, it's still, it's still going. Now, I, I always thought that once reptiles um, were hurt like that, they just automatically let themselves die. Well, um, I guess out in the wild they would mm -hmm. um, if they were injured badly enough, like your ribbon snake had been. Right. Um, um, a lot of these pets, or a lot of these animals that have become pets now, have um, have the have a better chance of fighting through things like that um, if they're taken to someone who can treat them accordingly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for example, we've been seeing snakes and ferrets and and the like, and there are ways to go about treating them for specific infections or. Um, specific injuries so we have the ability to do that um, as far as I know you're around the only one in Muskegon well in the uh, West Michigan area really that can uh, can take care of uh, reptiles or well not? not exactly I, I I won't claim that I'm a an expert in exotic animal medicine at all okay. um, I, I have an interest in it and so does my wife dr. dr. Jeannie Corbett um, and you through, guys have the, the same name too, huh? Uh, yeah, yeah, different last name, but uh, we work together. <laughs> okay. Um, we're we're not specialists, and other veterinarians in West Michigan do do see animals like this. Um, we just show an interest in them, and and by going to conferences and reading and boning up on information about them, um, we're able to um, give people who have these animals. Um, some some pretty decent care, I think. Okay. Now, so, so you didn't like go study in Africa somewhere? No, and, uh, no, not some, at all. Some um, witch in fact, or in fact, in veterinary school, we had a limited exposure to uh, information regarding animals like this. Okay. Um, and a lot of what we um, have learned since that time has been through through our own effort and also through through kind of experience by seeing these animals okay. and the more more animals we see the more we experience the more things we learn about them the more comfortable we feel feel with them um, we also use sources such as the John Ball Zoo um, okay. and, and the herpetologist societies um, as well as any any other people who breed animals like this we're more than happy to listen to what they can tell us because yeah. we 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 continue to learn all the time about these animals. You know, I was talking to uh, uh, Elizabeth Tillman over at uh, the Hoffmaster Park, mm -hmm. and I, well, they usually have a lot of reptiles in there during yeah. a certain time. And I guess a lot of people bring in the reptiles to them too, where they find them that are hurt or something like that, and mm -hmm. they, they take care of them. Do you, have you ever talked to them at all about? No, I have not. In fact, you you were the first person to tell me that there was somebody interested over there. Um, in terms of the reptiles, and mm -hmm. I, I'm really interested in getting in touch with her to find out uh, yeah, because, her experiences. Yeah, because she was telling me all kinds of things about the snake, you know, about how I should, how I should put a heat lamp on the snake. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, she's going to be in here today, too, that we'll be talking to her. But um, it's too bad I couldn't got, got you two together. Yeah, it would be interesting to talk to her. Yeah. I, I would really like to get together with her anyhow. Okay, well, maybe I'll, I'll pass your number on. That'd be great. Okay, her agent will call your agent. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Set you that's, right out. That sounds great. <laughs> but anyway, she was telling me all kinds of things about the, you know the different uh, the snakes and what they do and this and that. I mean, she was real concerned about my son's snake, which was kind of cool, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, another thing, my my kids were telling me is that you have all these other animals, uh, snakes over there too, that eat rats and stuff like that. The uh, pythons and yep, yep. The bigger snakes do uh, come in. Yeah. We we have a fair share of people who are interested in in having pets like that. So we have seen. A uh, fair number of of reptiles and other species um, um, that people are are seem to be getting more and more frequently nowadays. Now, do you do you agree with that though, or do you feel that these these pets should be in the home? Or well, I I think there's a, such an interest in learning about them, and except for going to the zoo and maybe getting um, minimal information there, I don't think you really learn about these right. pets. Um, and I think there is an interest out there uh, for people 
in terms of just knowing about these animals. Yeah. And I think I think a lot of people, besides the oh, besides the uh, uniqueness of the pet of having something like that, um, actually, really, the majority of people who 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 find a pet like this really want to know about the pet. And I think that's one way to to actually you know find information about the pet is to actually own one, yeah. you know, to find to learn how to care for one and what problems might arise. Yeah, because you know I don't want to I want to come off as cruel or anything, but I, I would think that that the ribbon snake when it got scratched like that by the cat, I figured well you know we'll try to do what we can with it, but there's not going to be a place around that's going to be able to take care of this, this mm-hmm. snake. It's probably going to die, you know. Mm-hmm. And but s- some of the pets though, it's just amazing because I went over to fishing friends. And now my kids want this this ferret. Are you still there? Yes, I am. Oh, okay. Now, now my kids want the ferret. I guess the ferret has just become illegal again in, in Michigan. That's Michigan correct. Area. Mm-hmm. And uh, over at Fish and Friends, I guess they had like 18 of them or something, and I guess they sold like in that same day. Yeah. And they're ordering like about 30 more. They're yeah. they're a very high demand animal yeah. right now, yes. Why, why is the ferret such a popular uh, animal? Do oh, you idea? Um, I think the ferret is... I think because a ferret is um, actually a, a pretty friendly pet, um, but also extremely curious. Um, yeah, well, don't they have like claws though and stuff? I mean, yeah, they, they sure can... do, and they have a relatively good set of teeth on them. Yeah. Um, but they actually are quite friendly. The far majority of, <laughs> of ferrets that we see yeah. that are pets are actually extremely friendly and very attached yeah, to their owners. With, with my luck, I get the ferret from hell. You know, they like to attack <laughs> everybody. So. Well, you know, I think that happens with any pet you get. I mean, you could you could theoretically find a cat or a dog that could have yeah. aggressive tendencies as well. That's and the I reason think, why the ferret would be the same way, because that's when my, yeah. my dog and cat are. So, yeah, e- exactly. No. <laughs> exactly. Um, but they have become a very, very popular animal. Um, prior to the laws changing we rarely saw them and uh, there were people out there that did have them um, albeit not quite legal right. but uh, or legally but um, now that now that it has been legalized we have been seeing a lot of ferrets here so did you know how to treat these these animals mm-hmm. okay now the I guess you know once you, once you treat one you they pretty much have the same organisms but I mean what the snakes are a little, reptiles a little bit different you know um, than birds yeah the, I'll tell you the the differences between them when we see them for sicknesses that there, there are different things we look for um, from species to species uh, for example your snake um, uh, the the problems that that snake was having were obvious but they can be a little more difficult in terms of trying to determine problems or diagnose problems in them just because well besides the fact that they're a different kind of species and we they aren't the most common species we see right. um, we have to kind of through physical examination we have to kind of make a tentative diagnosis and not one that we can confirm completely unless we see them respond to treatment so you have, like you sometimes you might have like a neurotic snake come in. Well, or yeah. <laughs> or for example, well, to give you an example, we do see our fair share of reptiles that have respiratory infections, and a lot of times really? that won't. Yeah, a lot of times that won't be picked up right away on a physical exam. Like somebody start them smoking or something. Well, or? <laughs> yeah. Um, I I would say that some owners are a little more aware of their pets. And they pick up on things more so. And, and, and I'll tell you, a lot of their information really comes from the owner, from listening to the owner. Right. Um, although a physical exam can pick up on things, I think just as important is to listen to the owner's observations because they are with the pet all the time. Mm-hmm. They know the pet's behaviors. Um, and each pet is so different. And I, seeing the pet for 20 minutes to a half hour, I can't always determine at the time of a physical exam, the specific problems associated with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we try with a history as well as a physical exam to get a tentative diagnosis to what the problem might be so we can treat it accordingly. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, this ribbon snake, how, how big am I, is this thing going to get? Because I know right now it's too big for its 10-gallon aquarium. Now I guess we're looking at like a 30-gallon aquarium. Yeah, you're going to need one probably at least three or four times the size that you have now. Oh, um, good. In terms of sizes of ribbon snakes, I couldn't honestly tell you. 
specifics on on the total size on him. Um, Are we looking like six foot, eight foot? Um, I would say in that neighborhood, yes. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. But well, we're not I, talking about a snake like a boa constrictor. Well, yeah, or but still. A, right. How many people, maybe if you walk around with this eight foot snake wrapped around, they're, <laughs> not they're many. Gonna come and say, hey, what's happening? You not know? many. Not uh-huh. many. Although we have seen some, some snakes that were pretty good size. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe when it gets that size, I'll put it in the mailbox for the moment. <laughs> really? <laughs> Here, deliver this package. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, do you now? Do you take care of these these huge snakes, or are, do you, is there some way that you take care of these? Or I mean, how do you, how do you restrict them so they don't suck your head down? Oh, or um, most of the uh, reptiles we have seen, and, and I, I have to really say honestly, all of them so far that I have seen really have not been aggressive, and I I think a lot of it. Well, a lot of it is because um, their owners handle them yeah, frequently okay. and and these animals um because of handling through handling and a lot of it uh they tend to be a little less aggressive um also the pets we tend to see are are coming in with illnesses and they tend right. to be a little bit more depressed than they normally would be oh, okay. uh one of the complaints that we we get from owners um, when we treat their pets is after they start getting better, they tend to get aggressive. Oh, really? And the reason is that's really the way some of them are when they're healthy. And they don't realize that until they actually see it for themselves, until we actually treat them for a few weeks or a month or whatever, and they realize, boy, what's going on? Yeah. You know. Um, yeah. In fact, we see, for example, we'll see a lot of lizards like iguanas. Green iguanas are very popular. And yeah, yeah, I've seen a lot of those at fishing friends too. They're yeah. they're much more, they're much more active, I guess I could say, than uh, uh, they're more active when they're healthier, and okay. um, and we've noted that 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 when when they come in when they're sick, they're they're less active, they're not aggressive, and then as their illnesses subside and we're treating them, they tend to get aggressive or you know more active is the way I would put it. Okay. Now I heard your I heard your wife is uh, specializes mainly in the birds. Yeah, she has a, a a real strong interest in the in avian medicine. Now, how did you guys? You know, what what made you want? I mean, most veterinarians do the dogs and cats, but then only you get into the reptiles and the birds and everything else. And yeah. How did you guys get into that area? Well, I again, it was just um, an interest on on Dr. Corbett's and my part as to how we were going to go about um, um, allowing. Or, or seeing these pets, um, and again, um, I think it's because we have an interest in it, and we like the variety of animals coming in that way, that makes the day a lot more fun, a lot more interesting. I mean, <laughs> I can imagine it, it does. It isn't. Oh, here comes a python. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It isn't the routine kind of thing that we see, and therefore, we're you know, we 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 seem to have a, a more interesting day as 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 things go. And have you got any hedgehogs yet? Well, um, we have been told they're out there. Yeah. Um, I've had some questions related to them uh, in terms of owning them and, and, and what care they need, but I have not seen one in the clinic yet. I, yeah, I expect I, to see them soon, though. Yeah, because I, I, they were selling them over there. They sold one while we were over there at Fisher Friend again. Uh-huh. And it was, it was funny because she was showing this, this uh, hedgehog to this, this girl, and she saw how, how cute it was and everything else. I mean, they don't do nothing but sit there like a lump, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> they're but, pretty cute. Well, yeah, they're, you know, you know, <laughs> they got the kind of the picker things on them, you know. And, and she says, as long as you don't wear too much perfume, they usually don't bite. You oh, know? really? I guess the girl must have had some perfume on because it was nipping at her. So. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, but they still bought it. It was like 129 bucks. I think that's the new pet, so to speak. I know ferrets have been, you know, very popular and green iguanas lately, but I guess that's the new yeah, one on the horizon. Ferrets usually do things, though. They're, they're curious. They get into <laughs> yeah. stuff. These yeah. hedgehogs just sit there like lumps, you know, <laughs> a big lump of fur. I guess it's all in the eyes of the beholder, though. I mean, people get different animals for many different reasons. Yeah, let's get this animal. It does nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it will get one get in any trouble. Just yeah. let us sit there like a lump. <laughs> exactly. Okay. <laughs> well, do you have anything else you think you might want to fill us in about? about uh, well, again, I'm, I'm, my wife and I aren't, aren't specialists. We haven't been board certified in, in, in exotic animal care. I, I think a lot of what we do is because we have a strong interest in it, and um, we like to see these pets and try and help owners out in terms of learning about them and caring for them. So I think we 
we, along with the clients, learn together. And I think it makes it pretty fun and interesting to have a pet like that, um, um, just just because of the uniqueness of it and knowing what these animals are like. Yeah, well, like um, I, I remember the first time I saw our uh, ribbon snake eat a fish. was It was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> it was a cool. pet. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of cool. Yeah. So I can imagine just eat, having watching some of those other snakes eat rabbits and stuff. Know, it's, it's gotta be I, I'll a, tell you, I I personally couldn't watch that happen. You can't you can't watch it, huh? I don't think so. Yeah, I okay. I'm I'm <laughs> kind of not. I don't know. I I haven't been able to actually see any animal do that to another. But uh, yeah, well, it's kind of hard when, you, when you're there to fix animals, no matter what. Because I'm sure there's people bringing the rabbits in too. You yes. Know? And then you got to watch a snake eat a rabbit. I mean, that's not exactly cool either. I well, it hasn't it. happened yet, but uh, I hope not to have to see that. Um, <laughs> you know, I understand the 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 need for them to be the way they are, and that, I mean that's that's part of the you know the animal yeah, part of nature, cycle yeah. and part of yeah. nature. Um, so we we help on one end, and and the, and the owners can take care of the rest, <laughs> basically. <laughs> well, our, our snake lived. It's been it what well, I think it's been about a what two three months now. That's great. And so it's I will, I'll give you your address. Over here, the Fruitport Animal Hospital. That's correct. Uh, three eighty four North Third Avenue, mm-hmm. Fruitport, Michigan. Mm-hmm. And your phone number eight six five. Six nine four nine. That's correct. And if anybody needs that number again or any information here, they can just call here at KBZ, and I'll give it to them. That sounds great. And so, Dr. Carl Crump, thank you very much for talking with us. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Bye. You take care.